végére hagytam a pedofília és a hebefília, ami a tinédzser korúakkal való szexet jelenti témakörét, amely szintén nagyon erős a narcisztikusban. Hál' Istennek a legtöbbjüknek csak fantáziában vagy látens pedofiliában nyilvánul meg. Gyakori például, hogy a narcisztikus emiatt gerjed szexuálisan is sokszor a nagyon vékony gyermektestű törékeny nőkre, mert ezek az ideáljai. De bizony vannak olyanok is, akik ezen jóval túlmennek. Gyakori, hogy a narcisztikus apák mesztelenre vetköztetik gyermekeiket, meglepik őket fürdés vagy vécézés közben, ölükbe nyakukba ültetik a gyereket, hogy érezhessék a vágyat, elkérik, elveszik a használt fehérneműiket, vagy meglesik a kulcsukon át a fürdőző gyermekeiket. Nem szeretnék pánikot, ezért kérdezem tőled szem, hogy hol van a határ? Mikortól kell félni attól, hogy a narcisztikus veszélyes lehet a saját vagy mások gyermekeire? Milyen gyakori a pedofília a narcisztikusnál vagy a pszichopatánál? lehet erre jó megoldás egy sovány partner? Az egyik narcisztikus ügyfelem azt mondta, hogy a fantáziájában egy három éves gyermekkel létesítene szexuális viszonyt, főleg orálisan, de tudja az eszével, hogy ezt nem szabad. Mégis retteg attól, hogy egyszer ilyen helyzetbe kerül, és egyedül maradj egy kisgyermekkel, és hogy akkor bántani fogja. Mit gondolsz erről? Like with everything else, there are numerous myths about pedophiles. First of all, it is not true that pedophiles are attracted only to children. A majority of pedophiles are heterosexual, and the majority of them have families and children of their own. And they are attracted to opposite sex, actually and actively attracted to opposite sex. That's a majority. Majority, 20% uh, of population have constant pedophile fantasies. It's not rare. Majority of fathers are sexually attracted to their teenage daughters. It's also a fact. Um, I said before, anything can be a sexual object. Your daughter could be a sexual object. Why not? She's young, she's beautiful, she's, you know, she's nubile, she's sexy. There's no problem in principle for a father to be attracted, sexually attracted to his, to his daughter. I would have found it actually very disturbing if a man <laughs> with all the equipment would not be attracted to a young female just because technically he's her father. That would, for me, indicate some serious sexual disturbance. The question, therefore, is not in the urges and the drives. As Freud said, in the id, as he called it, we have numerous drives and numerous urges which are not acceptable in society, damaging to others, harmful. And it is our role, via the ego and so on, to control these drives, to moderate them, to mo modify them, to sublimate them, to... This is one of them. The, the, the drive to have sex with children is ancient and until extremely recently codified in the law. In Britain, until 160 years ago, in Britain, the legal age for marriage for a, for a woman was 10 years old. 10. In Yemen, until a few years ago, was 12. Afghanistan was 12, and so on. This is culture dependent. In the, vast majority of, in the vast majority of the world until very recently, a woman at the age of 12 was able to conceive, and the minute she had a period, she was able to conceive and was considered you know, eligible for marriage. The concept of childhood is a very new concept. If you read Charles Dickens, there's no mention of the word child they used to be called young adults, young men, young women. Louisa May Alcott wrote a book. She didn't call it Young Children. She called it Young Women. The book is about children. If you read Louisa May Alcott's book, which is now a movie, it's about children. But she has no concept of children. She calls them young women. Because starting at the age of four, or six, depending on the people, went to work in factories to help the father, or in the fields. Or if they were already 12 years old, they had children. 
It's, well, the very concept of child is very new. As the concept of child was invented, again in Victorian Britain and in France this time, the concept of child was invented, we started to have prohibitions on certain interactions with children. Now, pedophilia is and should remain a crime, active pedophilia. And so we should distinguish between the act and the fantasies. Fantasies are common. They are not unique to narcissists. They are detailed. There is a sprawling industry of child pornography online because of that. The, and the fantasy should not be suppressed, cannot be suppressed, cannot be fought, cannot be, on the very contrary, I think it will be counterproductive. So, what should be monitored very closely are the acts. And this is where your next, the, your other question comes in, where's the line? Where's the line? First of all, because of the unique structure of narcissist and psycho, psychopath's personality, the risk of incest is much higher with narcissists and psychopaths. And the risk of pedophilia, active pedophilia, is, is much higher with narcissists and psychopaths. Because they regard the children as an extension of themselves, so they're actually having sex with themselves. Because they think they are actually educating the child or doing the child a favor, introducing the child to sex. Because they believe that uh, the child needs some kind of special protection. Because, I mean, they, it's endless. Very big risk with narcissists and psychopaths. So with narcissists and psychopaths, the minute inappropriate behavior begins to show up, of the kind you described, with the bathroom and so on, this, this must be cause for serious alert. Because it's a slippery slope. And the narcissist starts by entering the shower when the child is naked, and before you know it, he's having sex with the child. It's, in the case of narcissists and psychopaths, there's no impulse control, no boundaries, no limits, no obedience to rules, no... So there you cut it the minute there is the first hint of inappropriate uh, behavior. Not with normal people. With normal healthy people, a conversation would do. Listen, you embarrass a child, it's not okay. Child mis may misunderstand what you're doing. You know, it's, it's okay, you can talk to healthy normal people, no need for alarm. Or, but with narcissists and psychopaths, you have to be, you aggressively defend the child. You have to aggressively protect the child and educate the child. Tell if, if father is doing this, it's not okay. You should tell father, please, father, can you leave the... I mean, you should teach the child to be proactive to set the ch for the child to set her or his own boundaries and enforce them and warn the child to identify warning signs.